Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us uh, for another session of the WNS Operative Grand Rounds. We're privileged to have with us Dr. Johnny Delashaw, congratulating him on uh, his new position as the chairman of the University of California at Irvine. Thank you. The first part, thank you. The first part reviewed uh, the basic concepts regarding microsurgical ligation of supratentorial arteriovenous fistulas. This part two will review the basic concepts and some of the nuances of technique for posterior fossa arteriovenous fistulas, as the most common form of this fistula would be um, superior petrosal sinus. We are going to focus on the topic. As always, this is the uh, disclosure and acknowledgement for uh, Johnny who, uh, and myself. Let's um, go ahead and dive in, Johnny, if you don't mind, directly in the case and review some of the basic concepts to sure. create some excitement, thank you, about this case. A 52-year-old female with a son, sudden onset of severe headache. Sounds like a pretty apoplectic event. And as you can see, the CT scan shows a large interprancheal hemorrhage as well as evidence of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Obviously, these days, we go straight to um, CT angiogram. And the CT angiogram demonstrates this abnormal vessel along the posterior fossa and anterior pontine area, and really no evidence of an aneurysm or other vascular abnormality. Johnny, if I may ask you, these days with so many of us relying so heavily on CT angiogram, this is a lesion that could be very easily missed. Any other pearls you have in looking at a CT angiogram to make sure this lesion is not missed? So if you have a CT angiogram with an interparenchymal or subarachnoid hemorrhage and you have some abnormality and you don't understand it, it's important to get a cerebral angiogram, not only to get the four vessels intracranially, but it's also important to do an external circulation looking for a dural AV fistula. In this particular CTA, there's clearly some abnormality located along the CP angle on the right side. And that abnormality suggests there is some kind of vascular malformation. And it really does look like it's probably going to be a dural AV fistula. But I would recommend an angiogram to get a full delineation of the extent of the vascular malformation and where the venous outflow begins, because that's going to be the important part in deciding how to treat this. Remember, with dural AV fistula, it's very important to include the venous outflow. If one does that, one can successively treat the dural AV fistula. Just taking care of the arterial portion will not always successfully treat the dural AV fistula. So I'd get an angiogram in this case. And that's exactly what we do, Johnny. And as you can see on this angiogram, you can get some of the tentural feeders from the internal carotid artery injection or the usual bernasconi cassonari arteries often defined for meningiomas at this region but hypertrophy from infralateral trunk of the superior hypophyseal artery. And as you can see, it is often intimidating looking at these veins and varices along the posterior fossa, but often there is a seemingly connection between these arteries along, along the edge of the uh, petrous tentorial junction right where the superior petrosal vein is located, defining them as a superior petrosal sinus AV fistulas. And again, a P view of the angiogram, later arterial phase defines that a little bit better. Anything else you look for in the angiogram, John? Yes, yeah, so this, this here, this lateral view here, really explains it. You see this small variceal in the superior petrosal vein here. And you see all these anterior feeders. If one tries to embolize these feeders, there'll be others that they may not be able to embolize. And these are all very small and be very difficult to get to. But if one includes the outflow right here, that will take care of the fistula. It will also take care of a lot of this venous drainage. The, the venous drainage will be a lot more slack. And really, the treatment is, is to take care of it right here where you, where you showed. So the angiogram really tells you where you need to go to treat this dural AV fistula. In, actua in actuality, for many of these, if you can find the single outflow of the dural fistula, you can treat this very sim simply. Thank you. 